week, you talk about uh, don't use your history. Like when you tell Magellan where you want to go, you don't talk about where you were last week and so forth. But it seems to me like uh, you are your history. You uh, bring with you everything you learned when you were a kid and so forth. But my question is, well, that is not actu actually altogether accurate. Okay. It would be accurate to say that you could be the culmination, the culmination of what you have been. And when you think about it, every thought that you've ever thought still exists somewhere. But you are not right now in your powerful now, a vibrational match to every thought you've ever thought. Right. So... What's active in you right now is not everything that you've lived. What's active in you right now is what you're giving your attention to. Now, the reason that you say that what you said, and a lot of people say similar things to that, and even when we say in your powerful now you are the culmination of all that you have lived, the reason that any of that is true is because it is likely that you're going to feel pretty much today the way you felt yesterday if you're not very deliberate about it. Mm -hmm. So as something happens when you're a child and you ob observe it and offer a vibration about it, and then the next day you talk about it, and then the next day you talk about it, and there are family photographs and family history, and then you write a book about it, and you keep the vibration of that event active in your vibration, then you would today be vibrating your history. But we encourage a very selective sifting of history and a very deliberate vibration of history. I'm getting better at that. Just cleaning up your vibration all along the way mm -hmm. so that today I am the culmination of the exposure to the contrast that I've lived. But when you look at it this way, that we really want you to hear this because from non-physical perspective, this is what happens. That history that you lived that was present while you were living it, that history that you lived caused you to become, as far as non-physical energy essence is, to become something more. In other words, when you live something on unwanted, what is wanted becomes a rocket and source energy actually becomes the vibrational culmination of that desire. So you are in the constant state of becoming. So you could say that you could accurately say that your inner being, that the source energy within you, that the you that is being held in vibrational escrow really is the fantastic positive culmination of all of the history that you've lived mm -hmm. and so if you've got your sights set on closing the gap between where you are and that fabulous fabulous historical culmination now you're really on to something worthwhile good way of looking at it yes okay my question is and i was speaking to the person next to me yesterday uh i didn't agree with her at the time but that's part of the question she said, when you come into this world, you have a destiny. And I say, no, I don't think you have a destiny at the time. But my question is, I know that there are people that like to serve others, volunteers, so forth and so on. And there are a lot of people that don't want to do anything for anybody else, just for themselves. So do people decide this? as they are born. And I say it's you learn this from your parents and people as you grow up, because uh, I like to serve other people and try to do some good for, for the world. But uh, is your opinion that uh, you choose this or? Well, here's, here's what we know to be. You can call it an opinion if you want. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Rather than using the word destiny, we would use the word probability. And we would say that in the same way that as you are offering thought now, you are creating a probable future, that 
since you didn't just start creating once you got in this body, that there was a whole lot of intending going on before you actually became this physical human being that you know. And so you did have a path laid out before you. But in physical terms, that path would be seen as a much more general path than most humans are now making it out to be. We want you to understand that from that non-physical perspective, you are enormously selfishly oriented, not because you are selfish to the exclusion of wanting well-beings for others, but selfish in the sense that you have the perspective of self and you have control of the vibration of self in the story. In other words, that's the way you create and the entire universe is oriented toward all of these selfishly perceiving, selfishly oriented, leading edge creators who are from their exposure to experience now summoning the broader non-physical energy forward. In other words, we're, we're giving this to you by way of helping you to understand that selfishness is not a bad thing, it is a natural thing. But what we've also know, noticed, another thing that we know to be, is that when you are in vibrational alignment with who you really are, the truest, most basic nature of your selfish nature is that from that place you now wish same for others. So if you are really purely selfish in the way we mean it, you cannot then exclude your desire to be an uplifter. Because the very nature of your selfishness is to return to the source that is you. And you don't exclude others from that desire. You want that for them as well, you see. There is, however, something that we see as just a little bit screwy in the vibration of so many people who mean to serve. Because in that attitude of service, and we find no fault with that, do not misunderstand us. You are an uplifter to the core of your being, and there is nothing that any of you seek more than to assist others in reconnecting with who they really are, with reconnecting with the life that is really what life is, with the energy that is really what life is. But there are a lot of people who are in some sort of servitude who do it not from their place of connection, but from their place of being aware that there is something wrong in the world. And when you serve, when you see a contrasting experience and you see something wrong in the world and you activate your vibration to match what's wrong, and then you seek to make it better through action from that vibration of awareness of what's wrong, now you're not connected with the energy of source and now you have nothing to give anyone and an extended period of time of trying to offer service from a place of not being truly connected to source leaves you depleted and you begin, we're not talking about you, we're talking about the general idea of it. It leaves you depleted and it leaves you feeling resentful and like a martyr in time. And the suicide notes that people like that leave are, I just can't help those people. And so what we're really saying to you is, do not see selfishness, which means I am so selfish that I care how I feel, which means I'm so selfish that I work to make sure that I'm connected with the energy of source. And that kind of selfishness makes you the best servant of people that you could ever be because now you've got something to give them. But if you're not selfish enough to care how you feel and if you're not selfish enough to tend to your own vibration and if you're not selfish enough to really need or want to work your way up the emotional scale so that you are in vibrational concert with the energy of your source then there can be no service that you could ever offer that would amount to anything we want to say to all of you and how is it that you justify your existence? Or better said, we want to say to you, and how is it, from what authority do you ask for things to come to you? As Esther calls on the telephone this morning and asks for some ice, we say to her, and by what authority do you make this request? Well, I am the person in the penthouse, Esther said. <laughs> by that authority or I am a person on a cruise ship 
and by that authority. And we said, the answer that we want to hear from everyone, if they hear the question, by what authority do you ask the question, or do you ask for the service, or do you ask for the improvement, or do you ask for anything? We want your answer to be by the authority that I am the center of the universe by the authority that I am source energy and that all that is seeks to answer the request that I offer. In other words, we don't want timid, timidness from you. We don't want humility from you. And we don't want servitude from you. We want an understanding of your power and an unequivocal expectation of resources to flow to you, you see. And from that knowledge... Oh, you serve the world in a powerful way. And that's what you planned. That, sir, is your destiny.